O cholera! Czy to Freddy Fazbear? Czy to Freddy Fazbear? O cholera! Czy to Freddy Fazbear? You dopamine junkies always gotta have your gameplay on screen. Let me check. Ratatouille for the PS2. And that's all you'll get out of me. Five Nights at Freddy's. For some, the name brings optimism and excitement. For others, bitter hatred and anger. And myself? Ever since I was a wee lad, I've been encapsulated by this funny little bear and his funny little pizzeria. I would spend hours upon hours watching Markiplier or some ex-YouTuber playing Five Nights at Freddy's or making some sort of Five Nights at Freddy's video. In fact, if it weren't for Five Nights at Freddy's, I probably wouldn't be delivering these sweet vocals to your precious little ear holes. I started up my first channel on Five Nights at Freddy's, making little Vine recreation videos with my marketable little Freddy toys. The body is gone? Wait, let me check the other security cameras. He must be, must be over there. But I say all this to say, I haven't been as invested with the series as I've been in the past. Ever since Security Breach dropped, I can't really say I ever cared about or kept up with the series. That is, until the movie trailer came out. Long story short, I knew I had to see the scary TikTok bear on the big screen on no other than the opening night. So me and my set of mythical creatures incomprehensible to human comprehension set venture to my local cinema to view the film at its earliest convenience. So we watched the movie, and by the end of it, all I could think was... Hey, yo, that chicken was pretty hot. I will fuck the shit out of that robot, man. I'm not even... Now, before I go off, I do want to state... I did like some things about the movie. The pros. I liked Matt Pat. I thought it was funny when Bonnie's guitar exploded in that little girl's face. And I liked the song choice in the credits. And Doug. The cons. The thing with movies about video games is that they don't seem to have a very positive reputation. The problem most people have with them is that you're taking the aspect of decision making, something an interactive video game like Five Nights at Freddy's utilizes, is, is, and putting it in the hands of an actor that you just watch on a screen. The reason why the first games are considered scary is because these hulking animatronics are actively coming for you. They're here to kill you. They're directly looking at you in the cameras. And unless they would have done an entire first person film, Josh Hutcherson is going to have to be your view into the world of these spooky animatronic puppets. Before the movie even started in development, they had their work cut out for them. Emma Tammy, director of films like The Wind and Blood Moon decided to fill the position as director of this film. And look, I'm no sexist, but let me tell you, there could have been some better directors. The only thing I actively wanted out of a Five Nights at Freddy's movie was for it to be a little scary, or at least have some iconic Freddy Fazbear jump scares in there, be they cheap or clever. However, now that I'm not in like sixth grade, I have a hard time finding a bright yellow chicken with a hot pink cupcake intimidating or spooky. I had a bowl of Freddy Fazbear Funko Pop this morning without any milk. So spoiler warning, the movie isn't very scary. Freddy Fazbear and his gang of miscreants always come off as goofy rather than creepy. Like in the first scene, where we get to see these animatronics actually attack another person, Chica sends out her cupcake to just kind of gnaw on this dude's leg, and then she gives a stink eye to his friend watching everything happen. First of all, it doesn't look like this cupcake could actually harm anybody by just chomping on him with his Bugs Bunny buck-ass teeth. Secondly, what, is Chica supposed to be like a Salamanca twin or something? I'm sorry, but you can't make this big robot chicken intimidating with such a comedically rebellious stare. 
The scariest and most infamous scene is when Freddy chomps on this bitch trying to sneak into this pizzeria. But the way it happens is so uninteresting and uncreative. This random kid inside this abandoned restaurant talks to this girl while she looks for her friends who just got effed up by Freddy and friends. It's a long story. He lures her into a room with Freddy, to which he decides to hide inside of the animatronic suit. Without any hesitation, the girl pulls up a chair to peer directly into Freddy instead of, oh I don't know, looking behind it or literally anything else but putting your head right next to the jaws of the six and a half foot robot. Then Freddy Was does the, the bite of 87, 87 and it's all off camera. Now, this movie is rated PG-13, which I do feel holds the movie back, but if it was rated R, they couldn't get all the 12 year old children into the theater. So from a business perspective, I can't really blame them for making it PG-13. However, I can say that because of that, the movie doesn't really have any big shocking moments or any big jump scare scenes. In the small instances the animatronics are actually on screen, they're typically just standing there and not really doing anything. And it was very off-putting seeing them for the first time on the big screen because when the animatronics aren't killing someone or staring down a goon, they just stand around silently. It's like you're seeing these massive robot animals staring down Josh Hutcherson, like trying to spook him a bit, but it doesn't come off as that. It just comes across as super awkward. Every emotion this movie tries to convey, and I can see what they were trying to do, but every emotion always gets ruined by something or someone, or someone's bad acting, or this horrendous script. Speaking of the script, the way the movie tried to approach the game's lore was also immensely disappointing. Hey, I'm starting to notice a trend here. The way they conveyed to the audience that murdered children were stuffed inside of these animatronic suits was to have multiple dream sequences of Josh Hutcherson in a field trying to get dead ghost children of the past to tell him who killed his brother like 25 years ago. And they used this dream sequence bit like a billion times throughout the movie. All of them around 15 minutes of just these kids going, Hey Josh Hutcherson, we'll tell you who killed your brother if you give us something. Then that thing turns out to be Josh Hutcherson's sister, Abby, which, whoa, crazy plot twist. Except it's still not very exciting because just before this reveal in the movie, you see these animatronics construct a fort out of tables and chairs with Abby just moments ago. Actually, that's another thing I want to get into. Whose idea was it? Which lackey for Jason Blum wrote out a scene where these dead, murdered children possessing mechanical robots team up to build a fort out of household furniture, then lay in a circle next to each other like some Disney XD high school camping trip montage. And in the process, they got Bonnie the Bunny, a tortured spirit of a murdered child enslaved in an animatronic animal suit for all eternity, falling over on top of a chair, and then giving a thumbs up to the camera like he's the Terminator. Oh, but, but, but they're supposed to act like kids! Then get Freddy to draw like a picture with like a crayon for Abby, and have Josh Hutcherson discover it or something, I don't know, anything but this Tom and Jerry Looney Tunes shenanigans. Speaking of shenanigans, the character Vanessa is some of the worst character writing I've ever seen. Vanessa kind of just shows up to the pizzeria while Josh Hutcherson is having one of his very fun and intriguing dream sequences, and she's never explained. She's never given a motive besides being Josh Hutcherson's lore guide at the end of the movie when she just spells everything out to the audience, which I assure is very lost by then. But Vanessa's all like, Listen, audience, my father, William Afton, just killed all the children you saw Josh Hutcherson talking to in this movie that you're watching, and now we must stop him. And it's so blunt and bland, just like everything else in this movie. This movie is just like a giant, boring slog to sit through, which is very disappointing considering people have been waiting for this movie all the way back in 2015. But what can you do? In summary, the Five Nights at Freddy's movie turned out to be a colossal letdown for me. From the get-go, it was evident that this project had its fair share of missteps. 
The choice of director left much to be desired, and the attempt to capture the essence of the games on the big screen was, to put it midly, lackluster. The animatronics that once sent shivers down your spine are now just laughably goofy, and any attempts at genuine scares fell flat. In the realm of storytelling, the dream sequences dragged on endlessly, and the attempts to weave the game's lore into the movie were a swing and a miss. And sure, there were a few moments that enlisted a little chuckle out of me, but I can't say it makes up for the $25 opening day ticket prices. Blumhouse just got you all excited about the idea of a Fire Nights at Freddy's movie, shit out some weak script, then shoved it all down your throats. And sure, diehard fans might find something to enjoy, but if you're here to actually soak in the essence of this cheesy little animatronic munchkin, you're better off revisiting the games. And if you disagree, feel free to leave a comment down below. I still won't care what you think. I'm right, and you're wrong. But I can't agree with you guys on one thing. She is such a bad bitch, though. I will fuck the shit out of that robot, man. I'm not even... <laughs> What is it, my toasters and toastitos? It is me, Ghost Toaster. And I have an update for you guys. Uh, this is purely off the dome, unscripted. I got the script right here. Listen to this mouse. That shows you how I'm on looking at the script. Uh, I just want to let you guys know that I do have a second channel that I uh, am joint uh, owners with. Uh, it is called Ghetto Gorillas. It is a entertainment channel. Uh, where we do pretty much anything. It's a variety channel. And if you like to turn your mind off and get some good old-fashioned dopamine, I would definitely recommend checking it out and maybe dropping a little subscribe. But I, I, it's, I'm, not, I'm not asking you guys. I'm just, I'm just uh, commanding you. I'm commending you. Um, and I just want to say I, I'm sorry for not posting. And I know I'm not a good YouTuber because I don't post. You know, I don't have the text that constantly changes while I'm talking. But uh, if you guys can please forgive me for that, uh, I would be ever so grateful. Please, please, YouTube algorithm, bless me once again as you did with the beta of Parappa the Rapper. Um, and that's all I got. I mean, I can't really, like, post that often anymore because, you know, I'm going into college, right? Uh, I'm, I'm about to get... Uh, doctrinated and uh, you know I got a lot of things going on like homework <laughs> blasted homework um, and I also just really don't like how the YouTube whole thing is going right now you know it's not a great place to be very um, competitive but not like in a quality sense it's kind of just who can push out the most mind-numbing slop the fastest and that is not what I want to go into. And that is also partially why this bit... And you you don't care. You probably just skipped through on this anyway. So, uh, I guess I'll just end it here. Um, I guess that's it. Do, 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 subscribe.